In January 2006, Hamas won the Palestinian elections that were universally recognized as being the fairest and freest ever held in the Arab world, which is admittedly not a very high standard. It's like the tallest building in Plains, Georgia. But nonetheless, they were the fairest and the freest ever held in the Arab world. Israel reacted to these fair and free elections by tightening its economic blockade of Gaza. In June 2007, Hamas preempted a coup attempt orchestrated by the United States, Israel, and elements of the Palestinian Authority. After the aborted coup, Israel further intensified its blockade of Gaza. Just before Israel's so-called war of self-defense, the main United Nations organization monitoring the occupied territories, OCHA, the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, it published a study entitled The Impact of the Blockade on the Gaza Strip, a Human Dignity Crisis. It reported Israel's 18-month-long blockade has created a profound human dignity crisis in Gaza leading to a widespread erosion of livelihoods and a significant deterioration in infrastructure and essential services. As a direct consequence of the blockade, many Gaza residents were left without food, for, excuse me, were left without electricity for up to 16 hours a day and received water only once a week for a few hours. Nearly half the population was left unemployed and more than half the population was food insecure. 20% of essential drugs were at zero level, and more than 20% of patients suffering from cancer, heart disease, and other severe conditions were unable to get permits for medical care abroad. Many Palestinians, the study concluded, quote, report a growing sense of being trapped physically, intellectually, emotionally. If you look at the overall human rights picture, and leaving aside that it was Israel that broke the ceasefire that triggered the rocket attacks, a reasonable conclusion would seem to be that the Palestinians had a much stronger case than Israel for resorting to armed force in self-defense at the end of December 2008. When the massacre began, there was a lot of speculation in the media as to what Israel's real motive was. And there was a lot of specul speculation centered on the <coughs> upcoming Israeli elections. And there's no, no doubt that in uh, Israel, killing Arabs is a, a crowd pleaser, and that embarking on a massacre was going to win a large number of votes. Uh, during the massacre, support for the support for it in Israeli, Israeli Jewish society hovered at about 90%, sometimes a little higher than 90%. But I don't think that was the major reason. The um, very good Israeli journalist who covers the occupied territories, Gideon Levy, he said in the second day of the massacre, he said that Israel went through a very similar war two and a half years ago in Lebanon when there were no elections. I think that one was is correct. Uh, when Israel, what happened in Gaza was in many ways the inexorable outcome of what happened in Lebanon in July and August 2006, a topic I'll also get to. But Lebanon occurred just after an election. Gaza occurred just before an election. And therefore, I think Mr. Levy is right that the election itself doesn't seem to be a exhaustive an explanation of why Israel embarked on its, uh, as it likes to call it, operation in Gaza. Uh, Israeli elites, like political elites all over the world, uh, are very loyal to the state, and it would be very unlikely that they would squander um, important state interests just for the sake of winning an election. And Gaza did bear on important state interests, and they would not have embarked on such an operation uh, or, or, uh, simply for, uh, simply for uh, electoral reasons. Israelis have, uh, 
undertaken operations in the past abroad for electoral reasons, but not when important state interests were at stake. So for example, in 1981, the then Prime Minister Menachem Begin was up for re-election and he bombed the Azarak reactor in Iraq but the Azarak reactor was not at the time involved in nuclear, a nuclear weapons program. Uh, it was plainly just an electoral ploy by Begin. So, if it wasn't the election, then what was the reason Israel uh, <coughs> undertook its operation in Gaza? In my opinion, it was basically two reasons Number one, to restore what Israel calls its deterrence capacity. And number two, uh, to turn back the Palestinian, the latest Palestinian peace offensive. The Palestinians were becoming, in this case Hamas, were becoming too moderate, too reasonable, too willing to settle the conflict um, diplomatically. For Israel, this was a disaster, and therefore it had to uh, destroy Hamas.